On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. Vardamar was just released and players are now exploring all the new activities and monsters of this wondrous new area. And in this episode of Undrop Raid, we are taking a look at one of the new Slayer creatures introduced with this update, the Sulfur Nagwas. You'll need a Slayer level of 48 to defeat this, as well as the completion of the Twilight's Promise quest and having at least started the Perilous Moon quest. And on the drop table of these creatures exists a very interesting new weapon, called the Sulfur Blades which uniquely deals two hit splats of damage each hit, as well as dealing 15% increased damage against specifically Sulfur Nagwas. This weapon has a drop rate of 1 in 500, so today let's defeat up to 500 Sulfur Nagwas with the goal of receiving the Sulfur Blades. This creature's weakness is Crush, so this is the gear setup we're going to be using, of course extremely overkill for what these creatures are, but as I have the budget for it, this is the gear I'm going for. But overall these creatures have very low defense, so any decent Crush weapon will do. I do not believe this is going to work, but I do have to give it a try. I'm bringing a cannon to see if I can actually place one here, because of course that would be some extra additional DPS on this grind. Let's see if we can actually- s you can? No way! Okay, I have to go and get some supplies now in this area, and I will explain a bit about that as well. But uh, that is really cool. This is unfortunately a singles area, however, so it is not going to be super useful, but some extra DPS is uh, nothing to complain about. Now, so the reason why I have no food and potions in my inventory is because you can actually get them for free here in this area, and they are really good. So over the course of the Perilous Moon quest, you actually set up these camps, and you can take out herb lore supplies and fishing supplies. So first off, let's go ahead with the herb lore supplies. All you have to do is pick these grubby saplings, and when you do, you crush them after words and you make these potions called the moonlight potions these are essentially super combat potions you can see my stats are boosted right here as well as also restoring prayer points and when it comes to food go to the stream bound caverns by the way the potions were made in the earthbound cavern and click on this fishing spot right here and if you want to do it a bit faster you can click on where the fish is going but you can also afk and catch a full inventory of food and when you've collected the amount of food you want you go here and cook them extremely quickly and these cooked brims heal you 30 percent of your fishing level so for my case roughly 27 28 which is vastly stronger than even sharks and anglerfish and these camps are located all over the place, one included right next to the sulfur nagwas. And because you can only take a certain amount of herb supplies every single time, you can actually make a bunch of these moonlight grubs just to instantly make new potions right at the sulfur nagwas. But I guess it's time to begin the grind, we have the loot tracker enabled at the bottom of the screen, and let's see what the first kill is going to be. Nature runes worth 900 GP, very nice. You can actually stay at these sulfur nagwas for a ridiculous amount of time, as you can make all the supplies in this area, as well as all the items they drop is either runes or noted items. So really, unless you get a hard clue scroll which is on the drop table, there is really no reason to leave. And what's really interesting about this, as you don't actually bring your own supplies, is that there is no cost to this grind whatsoever. I'm not using any degradable gear, and the cannon definitely is not necessary, I'm just doing it to speed up the grind slightly, but it's not even doing that much damage. So if you're a mid-level player, and you're actually doing this for a slayer task, I would say it's a pretty good one, just to get some decent money, and the experience is actually pretty good, and especially if you have the sulfur blades, which has a 15% damage increase against these, it's going to be even better. And that is the first Sulfurous Essence, which is a new item for this update, and I will go over what this actually is later in the video, so stay tuned for that. Yo! No way! What? We already have the Sulfur Blades! 29 KC in 1.14 million GP! Okay, well, I guess that was the fastest on drop rate we've ever done. And that should be a new collection log slot in the Slayer tab, which I'm actually getting kind of close to completing at this point, which is kind of cool. If we go all the way down here, there they are, the Sulfur Blades. Now, these are two-handed weapons, so you can actually not use them with a defender, but let's go ahead and use them. Oh, those look so good, man. We will have to try these out on a dummy, and you know what? I'm actually going to give them a try on these Sulfur Nagwas right away. 
20 0 6 23 you see they hit twice every single time that is a really cool mechanic and they of course have 15 percent damage increase against these sulfur naguas now I guess it came way earlier than expected, but now is the time I'll explain the Sulfurous Essences. If you talk to this guy right here, which his name I'm not going to pronounce, you can actually turn these in for runecrafting experience. I found some essence while fighting the lesser Nagwas. Yes, let's go ahead and hand it in for 500 runecrafting experience. And that means 50 experience per essence that you can get from 6 to 10 per drop at a 1 in 32 drop rate. That means on average, every single sulfur Nagwa you kill if you get 8 on average on a drop is 12.5 runecrafting experience. That means you roughly only have to kill 1 million sulfur Nagwas to get 99 runecrafting. Not too bad of a deal if you ask me. Before we part with these beautiful weapons, I do want to mention why they are actually going to be so useful for new accounts slash new players in this game. The Sulfur Blades have very similar stats to a Dragon Scimitar, which is locked behind the Monkey Madness quest. And these only require 55 attack to use, meanwhile Dragon Weaponry requires 60. Also, the requirements to get these blades is basically nothing. I mean, on a main account, you can just buy them. But on an Iron Man, the requirements to actually get to these is done in basically one or two days. But let's go ahead and try this out. If we have the weapons equipped and we attack the dummy with no piety, we hit 19-19, 38 damage. And with the Dragon Scimitar, with no other buffs, we hit a 38 as well. But of course, with this, we can have a Defender, which is going to increase that all the way to 40. So for all you new players, the Sulfur Blades might be the new Dragon Scimitar, which is quite something. When researching for this video, I did actually look a bit at the price of this weapon yesterday, and they were at 600,000 GP. And now they are over 1 million, so I guess the price of these are going up quite a lot. So let's see if we can actually sell them for 1.1 million GP instantly. And it should happen. Yes, it did. 1.1 million and we got exactly that. I guess there's not that many people actually killing this, but I suppose people are kind of realizing how good these weapons actually are for mid-tier players. Also, I do have to say that I think these weapons are some of the coolest ones ever put into the game because I'm a massive rogue fan in different games and these really hit that edge for me. Thank you so much to Tourgud, Joachim Frank, Oxyfi, a heroic bear, Zoe Kinomura, and Franix for supporting this channel as members. If you want to support my channel as well, you can become a member for only two and a half dollars a month and get some nice emotes to use in my comment section or while I stream by clicking on the join button below. But with that, I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and until next time, guys, take care.